Welcome to our cooking show, Cultural Cuisines from Around the World. We are going to explain how cultures from different places can influence each other to create novel ideas that can influence other cultures as well. Hi, my name is Kai. I will be teaching you about the national dishes of Japan. Hi, my name is Dusty and I'm going to demonstrate how foreign cultures influence the Philippines and how adobo was influenced. Hi, my name is Ashley and I will be teaching you about the manners and customs as well as the national dish of Arabia. Hi, my name is Daniel and I am going to teach you about the national dish of Germany and how it was influenced by ancient cultures. Hi, my name is Sierra and I'm going to teach you about the spices of Mexico and how they are used. You will learn about how this food was influenced by different cultures throughout history. In this cooking show, you will also learn about manners and how to eat all sorts of food from different cultures. Hi, my name is Kai. I will be showing you how to make this really simple food. In Japan, there would be a lot of water around Japan, so they would fish for fish and then you have to make it raw fish but from a Japanese market. Okay, now you're going to need to cut the fish like this. You can't use the normal knife that we use here. You have to cut it from the middle. Not too big, not too small. It should only take you about three cuts. Now, first, this is Japanese herb. It goes really good with the fish. You have to break the stem because that is not edible. Next, you can just go like this, pause them. It is a tradition to do this. Okay, to now, to make it more better and tastier, you're gonna have to use a sauce called soy sauce. In Japan, they would use it. Only rich people can get their hands on these a long time ago. Then, you would find wasabi, also the same thing, but the soy sauce. I don't like wasabi, but then this would be everything. Now you have learned about how to make Japanese most national or traditional dish in Japan. Hi, my name is Dusty and I will be showing you how to cook the national dish of the Philippines, adobo. Adobo first originated in Spain and has a Spanish and Chinese influence. This is all the stuff you will need. One tablespoon vegetable oil, six bone-in skinless chicken thighs, three cloves garlic minced, two-thirds apple cider vinegar, one-third cup soy sauce, one teaspoon whole black peppercorns, and one bay leaf. I've already had everything prepared, so I'm just gonna throw So while it's cooking, you wanna turn it over to make sure that both sides are evenly browned. So you're gonna get, you're gonna wanna get rid of all the oil except for about one teaspoon. Then, you're gonna add the garlic. And then, you're gonna wanna let it Saute until it's soft for about a minute. So now you're gonna add the remaining ingredients, bay leaf and apple, some bay leaves and apple cider. Just add about like one right in the middle. Then pour in the, a little bit of apple cider. Now you're gonna lightly spoon the sauce around on the chicken. And you're done, so. Now you can enjoy a Philippine cuisine in your own house. Hi, I'm Ashley and for the Ivy exhibition, I chose to research Arabia's national dish and their customs while eating. I chose to research this topic because I'm interested in Arabian culture.
Today, I'm going to make the national dish of Arabia, al Kabsa. You can find this dish in many restaurants in San Diego, such as Aladdin Cafe. The national dish of Arabia was influenced by the nomadic Bedouin in Persia. It is a vegetable stew with chicken and rice that can be sometimes served with a salad or soup for a side dish. Okay, so I've started by pouring some oil into the saucepan and I added the diced onions and garlic that are both finely chopped. And so then I tossed in some chicken, about five or six pieces, and I've let that kind of just cook until it's simmer and cook until it's golden brown. So that's what I've done so far. So now I'm going to pour this rice in, about two thirds of this package of basmati rice. Okay, and there. So now I'm going to pour this water in. It's just enough to cover the rice and chicken mixture. And then I'm going to let it boil. I'm going to let it sit until the rice and the water covering it is boiled. Once it comes to a boil, I'm going to turn it down to a simmer and let it set for like about 15 minutes. So I have, we have boiled this rice in water with the chicken and the onions and the garlic. So it's been simmering for a while. So now I'm going to add the cobs of spice mix, which is cumin, black pepper, and a little bit of salt. So I'm just going to sprinkle that around and stir it up. So now that I've added the cobs of spice mix, I'm now going to add these tomatoes and sliced mint leaves. And now I'm going to mix some Okay, so finally now we're going to finish up this dish by adding some dry crushed red pepper. And some chopped diced dry limes. Okay. Voila, there you have it. A traditional kabsa, all kabsa dish. Now you can interpret Arabian um, culture into your cooking at home. Hi, my name is Daniel Lennon and I am going to talk about the national dish of Germany, sauerbraten. And it means sour, sour roast in English. This dish started in Roman times when Julius Caesar preserved leftover meat, leftover cooked meat using vinegar. I also learned that Albert the Great and Albert Cologne made this dish popular using fresh meat. In the beginning, the Germans started making sauerbraten using horse meat and soaking the meat in vinegar and spices for a few days. This made a very sour and tender roast. German, German immigration to the United States and Argentina brought this famous dish using thick cuts of beet Beef. Now you can find this dish in restaurants all over the country. Right now I am going to show you how to make sour broughton using a crock pot at home. Right now I am going to show you how to make sour broughton at home using a crock pot. The ingredients are two pounds of beef bottom roast, half cup of apple juice, three tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, one onion slice, one stock celery sliced, one clove garlic chopped, two whole cloves, salt and pepper. For the gravy, we need two tablespoons flour, two tablespoons flour, and two tablespoons water. Okay, now the instructions are in a large bowl, combine the apple juice and the vinegar. Then put the roast in a bowl and marinate in the refrigerator overnight to occasionally. Okay, 
so the roast has been marinated in vinegar for a, a few days and now I'm going to put the marin and then I'm going to add all the vegetables. And I will, I'm going to put the lid on the crock pot and cook it on low for eight hours. I'm going to mix the flour and the water. And I'm going to mix the flour and water around. I'm going to stir until the gravy thickens. For convenience of the crock pot, you can make this dish at home and enjoy it with your family. And here's what it looks like. Hi, my name is Sierra and I'm going to be talking about the most three common spices of Mexico. Oregano, cumin, and red chili peppers. I want, I'm going to be making salsa because I want for people to know about, for people around the world to know that people around the world influence each other through their culture. The Spanish and the, the Spanish and the Aztecs influenced the use of Mexican spices. The Spanish brought oregano from Peru to Mexico. The Aztecs introduced the red chili peppers to Mexican people. Right now, I'm going to be making. I'm gonna. I'm going to be showing you how to make salsa, because it is a really good way to show you how to bring Mexican food to your home. Right now, I have a bowl of canned stewed tomatoes that are pureed, and it. Now you just add the ingredients. This is chopped up cilantro. These are chopped onions. And now you add beef broth. Oregano. Crushed red peppers. ground cumin, lime, And now the salt. And finally, you stir it. All you need is some tortilla chips and you're ready to enjoy.